Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is an Indeset tumble dryer. YT M1071R UK is the model. I got it for free off Gumtree, maybe? The guy told me that it, the pump was gone and that was that. So I got a new pump, fitted it, and it worked. I've made a video of that. Balfi commented on that video that I didn't need to replace the pump. I could just trim the rubber fins in the pump. So that's a different thing, different video. This one, I put it up on my last update video uh, last weekend. Very kindly, Balfi commented when I requested him to, to say, what would it be on this one? And he gave me a couple of scenarios that are in the comments of the last video, and I'll refer to it later on in this video. But cheers, Balfi, you got me off my ass, and we had a look at it. It wasn't what you said, which was the crazy thing. Um, stay tuned, it's an interesting one, this. Really simple fix. Not one that I would have found without some kind of good luck. Stay tuned. It trips the residual current device in the house, which is no good. So whenever you're drying, it'll run for five, maybe 10 minutes, and then pop, you lose all your electrics in the house. That's not a good thing, especially if you turn it on and go out. Gave it to a mate, he's been running it for a few months, started tripping the switch, the residual current device. So I put it up in the last uh, update video last week, and I knew Balfi'd know what was wrong, so I waited for his comment, and he's come back, said, have a look at the board, and then start putting the mega onto different parts, or just unplugging them and having a look. I took the board out, and I've had a look at it, and really, I don't see anything wrong with it, is the short answer. So, if you see something jumping out at you, but there's nothing that seems to be popped, broken, damaged, Nothing at all, no bulging caps, no burnt traces, nothing like that. I, I can't see anything on it. Like, I've seen on other boards things visibly wrong, especially when it's burnt traces and stuff like that. This one doesn't seem to have any heat damage on it at all. It all looks okay. Might be a bit of moisture here, if anything, but I don't even know if it is moisture. So I think everything's okay on this. It might not be, of course. Um, but... What's happening is, if the fuse board has the trip switch tripping, the residual current device, it means that something is turning on in the machine, and there's a path from live to earth within that component. And so we have to try and figure that out. So I'm going to reattach this guy. So let's reattach this. It should just snap in all around. It's a lot easier to get it back in by the looks of things than to take it apart. What are we getting stuck on here? Plug doesn't want to bend in. Socket, there it is. Okay. There we go. So that's all snapped in. So I have to rebuild it somehow. <laughs> I can't remember. This thing here is a communications port with five pins for diagnostics, but I don't have any of the parts for it. And I'm guessing this is the uh, Windy Dynaflex, Windy Dryer Flex. Tab W1133 1341. So I've got to try and figure this guy out. Some plugs are easy to identify because they will only go in one place like this. Most of them will only go in one place. Um, that's the whole point of how they build these things. And some of them will only go in one place when they have the when they have the cover on it. So you can't push them in the wrong place, which is well, that's exactly what you want. And the cables all tend to have a particular orientation as well. So it tends to be that things have a little plastic barrier that stops them fitting. And also they're a certain size, so that makes them easier to identify. To identify where they should go. Now, does that one go down here? These boards tend to have more places than... See, this one only has two, but how many, how many points does it want? Do these all want to go down there, or do they want to go up here? Oh, photos would have helped if I'd taken photos when I did this, but you know, it's not my way. So this one has three, then a space, then two. So it looks like this. Two with no gap, that looks about right. And I would say all of these come on the other side. And they're all longer, so they should be easier to identify. So seven with two, it should be this one. Six with two, maybe is this one. Three with two should be this one here. And if I got one more. Two with a space like this, I would say. And then there's quite a few left remaining, but that's the way it is. This should hook in here. 
So that'll just hide in space, and that's that done. So in, in underneath the machine then, we're about a minute in. This is the compressor here, and it only has three wires going to it. I don't see a capacitor on the compressor. So we have blue, brown, and peach colored going to the compressor, and we have two, in fact, I'm just looking at that, blue and peach go to this capacitor over here. So that's the motor capacitor for this guy, and this is the motor capacitor for this motor here, which Balfi called the BPM, which I suspect means belt pulley motor. There doesn't, so there is a capacitor for this guy, which is this one. Given that that motor is running fine, I don't see how it can be this capacitor. Now, that just shocked into action there. So this motor here, that's running at the moment. I can feel that. I just saw it shake and it's going. The other motor that's here is this guy here. This is a little DC motor, I think, in there. It, it's a cooling motor. That's still on this motor here, the black one, the fridge compressor. The motor that's down here is, uh, it's like a computer fan motor. It cools this guy down, brings air into the into the unit if it's too hot, I guess, or else it exhausts it out. I don't know which way it goes. So right now, everything seems to be working here. I would argue that if that, that's running now, so that means that this capacitor's on. This is running here, so that means this capacitor's on. The last thing is on the other side, which is the pump, which we knew was gone bad before, but it's a new pump in it of three months ago or something like that. I think I did it this year, so that's up to five months ago. Down here, there's some little black specks. They look like belt rubber to me. Otherwise, it looks very, very clean in here. Tiny amount of dust on top like that. Now with the sides not on the machine, it won't warm up, so it's not a normal condition. Both sides and the top aren't on the machine, so it isn't a normal condition to test it. So what I'm expecting is that if I just watch it, I might hear or see something, and that would make it go pop. But so far that hasn't happened. We're three minutes on this video, so about five minutes in now. This is when it would normally happen, in about five, three or five minutes. So we'll just have to let it run, and hopefully we'll catch it on camera or I'll see it or hear it and know that something is happening. It's an Indesit machine, which is the same as a Hotpoint machine. And like, I got it for free, so I wouldn't normally choose Indesit or Hotpoint modern things, but when something's free and it was almost working, I'd be happy enough to take it away <laughs> for free. The other thing that I can do is get the thermal imaging camera on my phone and have a look at the PCB when it's running that's an idea. If I leave the um, tumble dryer now, then that opportunity disappears. So maybe that'll be the next time. If we don't figure it out this time, I could put the thermal camera that uh, Tom EV DIY gave me a loan of, and it's on a it's, it's on one of these loans where I keep meaning to give it back to him, and it's just sitting in the kitchen. That's all right. <laughs> what could be happening as well? I hadn't thought of this. Was that there's a number of thermal sensors. So there's a thermal sensor here um, and there should be a couple of other ones around the machine. Now I'm looking at the wiring and I don't know that I see them. It might just be this one on this machine but there's normally on a, on a heated dryer there's normally a few thermal sensors and they pop from time to time but I'm saying that I, there could be some and I don't see any now. There should be a the black and red wire and blue going over there goes to the pump and I'll just go over and have a look at that. So the two blues going in there go to the pump motor. The, um, the blacks go to another thermal sensor over there. And the three reds there, they go to the, the water, the, the three reds go to the water level sensor. I don't know how that sensor works. It's just a little circuit board, but any, any of these items could be at fault. You know, I might just have found an issue. Very interesting. <laughs> Let's get the camera up. This, this is one that I wouldn't have found otherwise. So as I've been recording, I've been tracing through what's going on with the different wires in my head. And we've got five wires here, and more than that even. Um, seven wires and a black, seven reds and a black. So two of the reds go to the door switch. Two of, uh, five of the reds go to the, I'm looking at this wire here. Two of the reds go to the door switch. Five go to the PCB for the user interface on the front, 
and the black one goes somewhere else and I'm not sure where that goes but I'm wondering is it for a courtesy light inside or something else but when I was looking at it I was just looking at these different wires and you can see the way I've got the browns tangled around well if you can see that brown wire there can you see the fault yet I'm guessing this could be it the, the brown wires here have flats rubbed on them and I can see a strand of copper there now these brown wires are the main wires that come from the main suppressor over here, the radio interference suppressor. So there's a pair of brown wires coming from that, so these are live and neutral effectively, coming to the PCB. Now if they've both been rubbed flat, I'm trying to figure out where they would be, but I suspect they would be rubbing off the tin on the inside rather than the lid. So the reason I'm already, already concluding that it could be those wires is because it hasn't tripped the system yet. And I'm just looking at the inside of the tin work here. I think it's this one that it would rub off. So we would rub somewhere here. And if that little bit of copper has just, just got enough to flash an earth across there to get continuity, that could trip it. But it won't, it won't fail with the panel off. That's an interesting one. So I'm looking at this wire here, with the little flash of copper in the middle. That would be enough, potentially, to have an earth leak of greater than 30 milliamps, if, if that's how you measure it, back to the fuse board, but not enough. It won't, it won't leak to anything in the open air. So the machine won't do any drying at the moment, but it's already been on 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to leave it a bit longer. So a few things have happened then. The machine has run where I left Jeff for about 20 minutes. The fan at the front down the bottom, it came on and went off. And I don't know if I heard the drain pump on or off or not. I don't know because it wouldn't make any sense for it to be on. But then it went to an end, end of the cycle. And so it does seem to be working now. So I just need to put it back together and have a look at how the wires are routed up here. They maybe weren't clipped in properly. It's quite interesting how I just came to notice it so I put a message up on the last video and said well I, I put an, I made a note of it in the last video and said Balfi you might know Balfi's a repair person who keeps an eye on these videos and he very kindly replied and said check this check that and one thing he said was have a look at the board see if the board's okay we've done that we think it's okay to do that I had to take the board out then he said go through all of the different things and disconnect them, that's one option. The other option is get the Megger, which is an insulation uh, resistance tester, get this fellow here and put it on. So the machine is unplugged, capacitors may be hot but that is what it is. I want to put the covers back on here. This cover snaps on, I think this way. That cover snaps on that way, and then it's got a shroud over the top. Is it like that? Yeah, and that slots in sideways. Okay, so that's how that goes on. And then it would be good at this point to fit that in here, the way it should be, to have a look at how these wires are routed, because I've done it wrong, clearly. That's that's not how they should be with these these ones hanging out like that. So if I pull that out... Pull that one out of there, and the one over here, pull them out. So then we'll untangle that and try and get it done a bit prettier. It doesn't particularly matter if the earth is rubbing off anything, because it'll just earth itself. Let's tuck that cable in there. This cable here hangs up above, but I wonder, is it meant to be clipped in there? I don't know. And this one, there's a hook here, so I wonder if that's how it's meant to be travelling. But it won't, I don't have the play to get it through there. Bringing it over the top, you see, will rest it like this here. And if that's flapping, that's where it's going to rub. I don't believe that that's right. Underneath, there's a chance that it'll snag. And up here is what I reckon, where I reckon it goes, up there. I don't have a pattern for it, but there's clips for something, so... You've got to presume a lot of the time that whatever you have in front of you is where stuff's meant to go. Now, really, 
then a sheet of insulating paper would be good. This one hangs up and, and clips onto the top. Let's get the side on and have a look at it then. So, really, I think that's quite an interesting fault. Um, something that I can fix, which is the main thing. It had a tiny, tiny piece of wear because the cable was routed the wrong way. Could I have done that? I don't think I was on that board before. So I think what happened was, when I got this machine, the guy was giving it away because the pump was broken. So when the pump was broken, he got a repair person out to fit a new pump under warranty, I think. Why would they have been at that? I don't know. Maybe as part of their diagnosis, if it was... Oh, the pump should have been a pretty easy one to diagnose, though. So they might have done that and put the wire back the wrong way when they were putting it back together. I don't know. Maybe I did it, but I don't know why I would have been over there at that wire. What have I done? Well, I've put a little bit of tape around it and it's routed the right way. So even without the tape, it can't touch the drum, it can't touch the side. So it shouldn't be an issue anymore. I'm guessing something like this comes up all the time, but it is what it is. Once I had the board out, testing the wires with the Mega wouldn't have made any difference. With the insulation resistance, ins insulation resistance tester wouldn't have made any difference at all because the wire's not in the original scenario and it took, you know, five minutes 10 minutes or whatever i guess it could have run sometimes without any issue or maybe it was that it got hot and something changed or maybe it was it could have been that inside gets a bit humid when the laundry's in there getting heated and that makes a bond between the earth and the cable the earth of the chassis and the cable i don't know i guess we'll never find out hopefully that's it fixed it might not be uh, so what I have to do is I have to test it now and see, and hopefully it'll be okay. <laughs> so inside I've got some workshop rags that have been made a bit damp. It's on eco cotton to the driest. There we go, it's working. So I will leave it to see if it works or not. There won't be much to comment on here. It'll work or it won't. Be back at the end. So I went away for lunch, leaving the machine of unknown quality, unknown safety credentials uh, working here on its own. It feels warm to the touch, but it's finished now. And I wouldn't say it's bone dry, as a thing tends to be with vented dryers, but for a heat pump, they're definitely drier than they were. So it looks like we're back in action. The other thing is it didn't throw the fuse on the house, the residual current device. So that's a win, Indesit. Questions or comments, leave them below. Cheers to Balfi. Thanks for watching. See you later.